Hello YouTube. I am back with another little video. My lips were redonkulously dry. Um, I'm back with another little video and I'm so excited. I'm always excited for the videos because I'm just, I'm pumped. But this is so funny. The Holy Spirit wanted me to record this now. I've had this video idea for like a week now or, or over January 11th. So it is January 20. Honky stink, what day is it? It's the 26th of January. So I've had this for a few weeks now. But the Holy Spirit really wanted me to record it today and upload it today. So I'm like, okay. Um, and he really wanted me to do it now. And I haven't even gotten ready for my day. I haven't even started my day. Um, and I haven't made breakfast. I haven't gotten ready. Um, I'm just here with you. So, and I actually love it because for this video, that actually makes sense. Um, as you can see in the title, it's called Unconventional Productivity. And I've noticed there's been a rise this year on like productivity videos. Um, you know, people just wanting to be productive. They want to get stuff done in their... T yes, Rue. That's truly what's been happening. That's my bird. He's just so true. Can I do this video or are you going to interject the whole video? Okay. So anyways, um, there's like all these videos about productivity and how to get more stuff done and, and how to like be this this big productive machine almost because I think a lot of people feel like lazy they're like addicted to their phones they're they're just kind of lethargic they're kind of numb they don't really know what to do and so there's all these videos of like how to just keep going how to add more how to do more how to accomplish more and then the Holy Spirit started giving me this idea and he's like what have you just okay Rue listen do you want to go out in the hall do you want to go out into the mirror oh <gasps> Is that what you want to go? You want to go out here? Okay, hold on. I'm going to literally keep this in the video because... Rue, go, go, go out in the hall then. This is real life with a bird, okay? Come here, baby. See, this is, this is the... Rue, I'm trying to do... See this video? Oh, wow, you see yourself, I know, and you are the most handsomest bird I've ever seen. And I wouldn't just be telling you that because you are a walking black and white filter and I think you're just beautiful. But I'm trying to record this video right now. Okay, so I'm going to let you go in the hall. I know, no. Okay, so the thing is, welcome to my life with a bird. Um, okay, I'm going to put you in the hall because you love the hall. You love to go out in the hall. So there you go. You go look at yourself in the mirror. He loves to look at himself in the mirror. Yes, you're going to be happy now. I have a mirror out in the hall and so he loves to just go out there and look at himself anywho <laughs> um but then yeah so the holy spirit was telling me he's like Ezra Lee, like what have you just been through when i say what when he says what have you just been through um literally all of 2023 starting right about now but in february 2023 Oh my goodness, it was just such a time of healing with the Lord, and especially starting in the summer of 2023. Man, this, it was wild. <laughs> it was so wild. Anyway, and I want this video to be a video that if you, the Holy Spirit's telling you, okay, you're on pause, you're going to sit for a season, you're going to rest for a season, I want you to heal in this season of life, you're going to go slower in this season, this is how you can be productive in that type of a, of a period of your life, that type of a journey, um, and so I've titled, I even have notes, so I'm, I'm excited, I never have notes for videos, but um, there were some specific things I wanted to highlight, so um this is how I was and still am productive and restful in a healing time of my life as a single woman. So I really want to emphasize that this is for like single, a single person um, perspective. If you have kids, if you are married, you might have to um, incorporate different things here a little bit. But this is what I have done personally. Um, and this is what the Holy Spirit has led me to do. And I think that you can transfer this into many different seasons and, and stages of life as well. Um, but this isn't necessarily if you're wanting to be like this, you're actually wanting to do a lot and achieve a lot in a season. This is how to help yourself not feel guilty for sitting and actually feeling productive and listening to the Lord and actually, um, Here's what I believe. If you're just constantly trying to be productive, be productive. Let's let's produce, let's consume and then produce. Let's produce, produce, produce. 
but then you are still not healing the root issues of your heart and of your mind like your your traumas and stuff like that or, or the the things that have followed you the mentalities that have followed you a lot of people think it's spirits and stuff which demonic spirits can be at play especially if you're not a follower of jesus and you know that that's definitely a whole other conversation but i really believe if you're a follower of jesus that a lot of what you're struggling with is just like mental patterns and emotional patterns but it's really heavily in our minds here and so as the lord leads us through healing then we can actually be truly productive afterwards because we're not hitting the same walls because even if you have all your apps all your routines all your things and you're and it's good for a period of time then something's gonna like trigger you and then you're gonna go oh man i'm not productive anymore oh my schedule's ruined and then you start to get in your head instead of if you deal with the root of why you keep hitting the walls and letting the lord lead you through that process then it's going to be a lot easier in time like i've even just recently just like a day and a half ago literally experienced this mind like blowing revelation in my life that the holy spirit brought when i was talking with one of my good friends and it, it was so beautiful how the lord was like this is what i was trying to deal with this is what i wanted to show you but i wanted you to feel through this healing process everything that comes with it because you're going to help people with this process and so anyways that's a whole other conversation but i want to encourage you that the lord might be trying to get to a specific thing in your life so that you can truly change your perspective and see things clearly okay because you might not need to try harder and like oh what i need to do more i need to do more you might need to take a step back sit and pause for a season so that you can see clearly and see more clear the heart of the lord and just see what he's doing so anyways i want to get right into this I don't want it to be too long. Okay, but number one, this is what I'm, there's about 10 steps, okay? There's 10, not little steps, but 10 little tips that I can give you if you're in a lower, slower healing period of your life that the Holy Spirit has told you you're in, or you just know, like, I'm taking a step back right now, okay? So number one, wake up and ask the Holy Spirit when I should, what? Okay, I'm going to do this as first, for like, this is what I've done, okay? So I would wake up and ask the Holy Spirit when I should, what? hello what i should do not when i should do wrote the wrong word anyway um so wake up and ask the holy spirit what i should do for the day each day was so different so some days i woke up at 9 a.m or earlier and other days i woke up at 11 a.m and i typically went to bed at 12 a.m or 2 a.m i'm more of an evening person so you might see people on here that are like i get up at 5 a.m like that's not this like i believe that sometimes if you have a busy day and you actually have a full day of like you have meetings you have work you have kids you have a husband you have a church like you have all these things you might need to get up at 5 a.m because that's your alone time with the lord and then your day starts but this is like talking about a time where it's it's very flexible what the lord is doing in your life and i believe it's it's chiefly a lot of times for um just people to really refocus, right? And get their, just kind of heal until there's not as much on their plate. Um, but anyways, I I did not like set a, every single day I need to be up at this time. And like, this is what I need to do. I just kind of let the Lord wake me up. Or if I had things for that day, then I was like, okay, Lord, when do you want me to wake up? And he would be like this time. And then I would get up. And so I'd let him really lead even like when I get up. And then going to bed, I didn't really stress about it. There's sometimes where I was on the phone with you know, friends till like three, four in the morning, just talking about things we needed to talk about. And so some people would be like, oh, I can't do that. But I was able to in this period because God was giving me the grace to do so. And so I really want to encourage you don't stress about when you get up or when you go to bed, just ask the Holy Spirit, okay, what's going to happen in my day? What do I need to do to factor you in like him and the people in my life and the things on my schedule, but then also just like resting and, and just taking that time, okay? So that's that's number one. Like I just woke up and was like, Lord, what should I do? When should I wake up? Um, like not when should I wake up, but what should I do? And if I knew there was stuff the day before, um, like the day before I knew the next day I had stuff, I would pray the night before, like when do you want me to set my alarm, right? So just really leaving, being led by the Lord, right? And being like, okay, this is when I'm gonna get up today and you know, letting him give me the strength. And there's some days where like, I hardly could get out of bed. If I'm being honest, like I was so tired. There was so much, oh, uh, there's just like so much happening. And I was just so exhausted. But then the Lord is like, just, just chill, just relax. You're good. So anyway, um, number two, I made sure to get up though. So once I got up, I, I got up, 
I had a bath, I got dressed, I got ready, I made breakfast and usually ate breakfast. And then I read my Bible before I started the day. Sometimes I'd work out and I made sure to always make my bed. So this is something like I'm heavily doing work and like writing. I, I did so much writing um, this summer and fall. And so I was really heavily in this room. And so I was really careful to like make sure that even now like my bed's not made because I haven't even gotten ready for my day. But when I'm getting ready for my day, I make my bed. I like lay everything out so that by the time I go and read my Bible, like my mind is awake because I'm not a morning person. And so like naturally, and so I need to like really do a bunch of things and kind of get my mind awake and going and and start my day before I can actually be present to read my Bible. So some people are like, I read my Bible the first thing I do in the morning. Like, if you can do that, bless you in that. But like, I seriously just have to like get my brain awake, get my brain ready, and then like really take the time to give God my best, right? And so I'd be sure to get all ready, get all good to go, so that there'd be unexpected things that would happen in my days. And I would just want to be ready in case like a friend called me and was like, hey, let's hang out. Or my parents were like, hey, let's go here. Or like if someone was on the phone, like, hey, let's have a long call. And then I had a long call. And then um, I went into like making dinner and like doing all that. So it was just, I, I just asked the Lord. I was, you know, asking him what my day would look like. And then I really got myself set up, even when I didn't know what was happening, just to be prepared for anything. So that was number two. Um... Yeah, and sometimes I worked out. There was definitely a time where I was working out like every day. The Holy Spirit just kind of, he'll be like, no, like this is what you should do. And like, he'll remind me to just kind of, oh, this, you should work out here and you should do this. And so I kind of just would follow his lead. It wasn't every single day. Um, yeah, but anywho. Okay, number three, I listened to my body. Some days I couldn't even walk, so I rested. Whatever I had energy or grace for that day, I did. So pretty much whatever my capacity was for the day, like if I was like, there's some days where I know my brain is so alert, so active and ready to go. So I'm writing, I'm creating, I'm doing these things. There's other days where I literally wake up and I'm like, no, no, like I don't have the energy to do anything today, Lord. And he's like, yep, no, that makes sense because I want you to rest and I need you just to to do mind numbing things that actually let your brain rest. And so he really let me do that. So I really looked at it. I was like, hey, what do I have the grace for today? Because sometimes we try to do things. We're like, okay, this is on my schedule. This is what I need to do. This is a must. This is a must. But we didn't even ask the Lord, like, you know, what's like, what do I have grace for today? Like, what have you asked me to do today? Because there'd be times where I'd be like, Holy Spirit, like, what should I do today? And then I would just go about my day and even try to do the laundry. And the Holy Spirit would be like, no, not today. Do it tomorrow. And then it turns out that that day I actually was going to have, like, a social things that were going to take my attention away from being mindful of the laundry. My clothes would have sat there soaked. Like, you know, he knows. So I really just was led by the Holy Spirit to um, just listen to my own body and be like, okay, what... What do I actually have the energy and capacity for in this time? There's sometimes where if you're genuinely really busy with like work and stuff or whatever, like sometimes you just, you're tired, you don't have the energy to, and then the Lord just gives you the energy. And that's a whole other time. I've had seasons of my life where that has definitely been a reality. But when you are in a time of healing and the Lord tells you you're in a time of healing and he's just kind of rewiring things in your body and in your mind, um, yeah, you really have to listen to your body because there's things he's doing every day that you're not aware of. And so it's just really good to listen to your body. And that's what I definitely did. Um, and just looked for what I had capacity for and ask God, what do I have grace today to do? Um, number four, I hardly scrolled on social media. Um, I wasn't going to let comparison win and I just stayed in my lane. That was really big and important for me because there's sometimes where I would scroll a little and find like funny videos or whatnot or, or look up like friends that I'm thinking of and be like oh I wonder how they're doing or like you know catching up on that but I just really wasn't scrolling you know what I mean when I say scrolling like I just I don't like to scroll for long periods of time especially in this season um because when you're not doing a lot and you see others doing a lot that comparison is so easy to be like oh I should be doing more right like my personality, I want to be doing more. I want to know and feel productive by the amount that I'm producing. And the Holy Spirit had to show me like product productivity is not about production. It's about like following his lead and, um, you know, being obedient. And then he gives you the energy to really do what he's asking you to do for the day, which is productivity. Um, so I just want to encourage you. I feel like definitely someone's going to need that. Like 
True productivity is not what you're producing and true productivity is not matched by the money that you bring in. That is so, so important. And so really ask the Holy Spirit, his heart about what productivity is and don't be scrolling in a healing in a healing season. You got to stay in your lane and focus on what God's asking you to do every single day so you don't get sidetracked and tripped up, honestly, by comparing like, oh, I should be doing more because that's definitely not going to help you and it's not going to be healthy for your mind or your heart. So that's number four. And number five, this is more in the summer because right now it's winter in Canada, it's January. Um, and the sun comes out sometimes, but even now the sun's going behind a cloud and also my stomach is growling because I'm actually really hungry. But the Lord is like, do this video. And so he knows because I know my day is going to get busier through the rest of the day. So anywho, um, so I tried to get loads of sun in the summer. That This is number five. I tried to get loads of sun in the summer. Um, and really just, I laid outside so much. Like there'd be times where like, just for an hour a day, hour and a half a day, I don't want to like hurt my skin, but I would just lay outside and, and get that fresh air and get that sunlight because it really helps you. The vitamin D and just fresh air, just fresh air in general. There'd be times where if I had like a really low few weeks and I would make sure every single morning I would walk outside, even if it was for like five minutes, just do a quick walk. Um, and yeah, just really get some fresh air. It's really important to like get outside, even if you don't have the energy to like go for a massive walk or whatever, just sit outside, lay outside if you can. Even honestly on these cold days, I'll try to like go for a walk, walk my dog a couple times a day, just get that fresh air in. Um, and not now because it's winter, but in the even like spring, or not spring, nope, summer and like fall when it was still warm, but kind of cool, I'd leave my window open a little bit when we didn't have the heat on um, or the air on and just kind of, feel that fresh air coming in my so just try to get as much fresh air um as possible in a healing kind of like season of your life it's so important um and sun is so important as well um number six I made sure to have only the people the Holy Spirit wanted me to have uh only a small number so in my life I literally had a very small number of people um in my life which I actually needed um to to feel safe around and to feel like I could actually really heal because sometimes when you have so many people around you and especially my personality I want to constantly give to people I want to serve them and I often just kind of see solutions from the father's heart for their life and I want to speak that over them and I want to be there for them I want to listen to them and so I will always want to be like taking care of the people that are around me or that I see and being like how's your heart like like I want to talk with people right but I needed to be in a time where there was no one around me that I that I would want to help so that I could like be helped if that makes sense just for my personality so I had you know I, you know you still are helping the people that are in your life and to some degree in any form of like a relationship you're like a friendship and stuff you're just kind of you you're always there for each other right but just there was only a small number of people not just like a big number of people that I was you know trying to figure that all out and just really being safe with the Lord so um, he just told me, this is who I want in your, in your circle. And I needed very specific people to like help me and to be, um, there for me in that time. And the Lord, oh, it was so beautiful how he positioned the right people. And he will, he will faithfully do that. He, I was looking through old journals last night and he literally promised me in like 2018. He's like, you will always have the friends in your life that you need for each season. And he is so correct on that. Like I've been so amazed just amazed at Jesus in that area he's just yeah so I looked at the quality not the quantity and asked the Lord just just to lead who would be in my life and who I would open up to in that time and it changed it from the summer till even now it's changed um some haven't changed but there's been some that like the Lord's like no that's not in your life anymore that was for a time and so just really being flexible to let people go and let people stay and just really yeah, that was really key. So that was number six. Number seven, I tried to end my day with a psalm before bed. So I really started my day with scripture. Um, This was more so in the fall and winter, not so much the summer. The summer was like so intense for me. I just read scripture when I could, but I was so like, that was just an intense, it was an intense time. Um, But I've tried, especially recently, just reading a psalm before bed and whatever I'm reading in the morning, Um, I'll just kind of 
it's just encouraging and it's either even last night I read actually a passage of scripture so it's just a passage of scripture before bed but I was just doing the psalms for a while last night the Lord actually just led me to a different passage um not in psalms so just kind of following his lead but when I was just starting out the the psalms really encouraged my mind and showed me how like David was processing his emotions and going through the ups and the downs and it really comforted me in like a healing time so that's why the psalms were so important which I'm just putting together now as I said that so thank you lord because i didn't even know that at the time love it um okay so this is number eight i let myself be weak and admitted when i needed help or prayer this is a big thing for me i if i ever tell somebody like verbally to the to your face or in a text or something like if i say i can't do this i'm i'm really tired right now like I'm weak, I need help, like I don't think I can show up, or like I don't think I can do this, and I verbally process that out, and verbally tell somebody that, like that's a sign that like I, I just, I wouldn't typically do that, that is not something I typically do, I'd usually just be like I'll figure out a way to do it, like I'm an only child, I'm independent, um, I really, especially the past few years, I'm like, I'll just figure it out. Like, don't worry about it. Like, I'll figure it out. Um, but that's not healthy. You can definitely, it's good to be able to figure out your own stuff and like be independent. I think that's a great skill, but you don't want to be so independent that you can't lean on other people, right? So the Lord really showed me who to lean on, what that actually looks like and to chiefly lean on him, but also just to ask for help in prayer. Like there'd be times even in the middle of the night where I'd, I'd feel led go ask your parents for prayer and I'd have to wake them up out of their sleep like that is something that I do <laughs> I did not want to do but I was like I need prayer and the Lord's like I want you to go ask them like they are happy to pray for you and they were they were so happy to pray for me it wasn't even that long it just I just needed prayer and then I was good and the Lord really taught me with that just just in that simple example like sometimes you need to ask prayer even ask for prayer even if it's inconveniencing to the people like you view you know, oh my goodness, waking your parents up to ask for prayer. Like that seems so inconvenient. But if the roles were reversed and somebody, well, especially my own kid, I'm not a parent, so I don't really know how to like, you know, but I'm just going to say if somebody I knew woke up and they were in distress, and like I like need prayer and they woke me up, I would not be like, oh, you like just go. I would be like, yeah, like what do you need? Like I would act, I would stay up all night and be like, let's pray about this. Let's talk about this. Like, how are you doing? Right. So the Lord was just showing me that other people have that same heart as well. And so, you know, let them show that heart to me, right? So I really had to, you know, be able to receive that help and ask for that help. And that was something that I really wasn't the greatest because of some of what I've been through the past few years. Um, and so, yeah, he just he just showed me how to do that. And it was so beautiful. And it still is beautiful um, to be able to admit that. Uh, number nine, I didn't expect one day to be the same as the next. And this is so important in like a healing slash just not normal like you don't have a nine to five work schedule you're not like you just don't have a schedule and you're just kind of like god you just told me to quit my job because the lord told me to quit my job like three and a half years ago almost and so when you don't have like a job but you're doing online ministry but you're like helping other people you're doing other ministry you're you're just following the lord's leading it is so challenging because when you're used to structure and you're used to like you want structure like you crave like I really do crave structure I'm like I would love like in my heart of hearts to have like a structure okay I wake up at this time I go to bed at this time I eat these three meals in the day like I would love to have that but I have not had that for three and a half years so I really am good to just go with the flow be pretty chill so I was leading up to this season of my life the Lord did prepare me to be able to be so flexible that I was just like Whatever you tell me to do, Lord, that's what today is going to be. And then tomorrow it could look totally different. And I just, I really got in that mindset of you don't know what's going to happen in a day. So just enjoy the moments you have. Like, what are you telling me to do today? And just focusing on being present. And that was really what I had to do. And I still am doing in this day of like, hey, just show me what you want me to do for today. And I will do it. And I'm not going to expect tomorrow to look identical to today and be this like the same thing. Because that's not this season for for me and that's okay some seasons are like that others aren't the last one this is a big one this is really yeah number 10 I trusted Jesus with my provisions and surrendered my productivity to him so this is especially in the areas of finances it's so challenging when the Lord's like take a step back and even for me in my life I was doing I had almost a, not almost I had over a little over a hundred thousand people following me on TikTok and the Lord asked me in September to 
of September 2023 to delete it, to deactivate it so that it would not be around anymore, meaning all the videos got, got deleted and all my progress for two years, two and a half-ish years was deleted. It was done. And I really know that he it was asking me, he was checking my heart and he was like, would you give back to me what I gave to you and trust me? And it was just, it was actually hard for a second. I was like, oh man, that's really hard. I did it. I said yes. And then it was really hard the week after of just really processing this and the grief of like, man, I put so much time and energy into this Lord, like, you know, and, and that was the main way that like even finances were coming into me. I didn't ask people for money, but it was crazy how the Lord would just really prompt people to like send me money at just the right times. And it was crazy to trust the Lord with my finances and really just take a step back and be like, I'm not really doing anything, especially for a month or so in the summer. I wasn't really even posting anything. So to not be doing anything and you're like, you're not contributing to society in like any way you're just like helping yourself and letting the lord help you oh it was so hard and so challenging but i really had to step in this place of trust and surrender be like god i surrender my provisions to you i surrender my productivity to you and this is yours and you've given me the ability to generate wealth you've given me the ability to you know be successful in whatever you ask me to do so i surrender that to you and i really had to do that and that's the biggest thing of a healing, restful, unconventional productivity kind of place is trusting the Lord and actively, practically, by faith, living that out. And it is really challenging, but that's what I had to do in order to be sure that I could actually rest and relax and not be so consumed in my mind about like where's my provisions coming from and let me tell you every time I needed something it was there down to the T like crazy even down to like my hair appointments um appointment I only had one but I need to get my hair trimmed I was like I'm not even gonna have money for this and it just worked out and the Lord was like I've got you like down to the number anyway so the Lord he's so good and just the littlest things that he'll provide for in that time and you have to you have to release control because it won't be in your in your way of doing it and it definitely has not been in my way of doing it it's been so it's been so long and it, it feels so heavy and it feels like it will never ever end and a little bonus I'd say point 11 and the last thing I'm going to touch on is it's not going to last forever because in this healing time you don't have any distractions you don't have anything that can just numb yourself you don't have you don't have things that you can busy yourself with to ig ignore the main thing that has been or the main things that have in your mind been causing you setbacks and so it, it's like everything just kind of starts to come to the surface and you want to push it back and you're like no and the lord's really just trying to push out the infection that's what he told me he's like i'm just pushing out the infection i'm just squeezing it out because he's like i want you to be free and i want your mind to learn um my love and to to really learn some things he's like i could heal you in an instant but it's like i need you to go through this process so that you can help other people and it's tr it's true like what i've learned in this time i know i'm going to use to help so many people and just give perspective to so many people especially in the church and and i'm grateful like i'm so grateful it is oh man i'm so grateful but it has been hard it has not been easy and there'd be times where you know, I ha a friend told me, they're like, you know what? Like, this isn't going to last forever. This isn't your forever. I know it feels like it, but it isn't. And that really helped me. Like, that really sustained me through a lot of, like, just times where I was like, is this going to be how my life is? Because there was times where I was so exhausted, like, I couldn't even walk. Like, I was so tired. I did get sick in the summer with, like, a like a virus. And so I know that, like, that really zonked my, when I say zonked, it, like, zonked my adrenal glands for sure. And, like, I was fatigued from that for like a month even after like it really took a toll on me and I think my um nervous system as well was like really kind of regulating and figuring that out so I was going through a lot and the Lord had to even teach me he's like you don't even need to go to like a doctor even though I did go before all this and got blood work got all this stuff and they're like you're really healthy like you have nothing to worry about which I'm so glad I got that before I went through this journey because it would have been really stressful for me to go through that more so than I already was. Um, but the Lord just told me, he's like, just, this is, this will all lift when the process is over. And so he's like, you just need to endure this. And that was really hard. And, but he helped me and he led me through this. And 
the unconventional productivity showed me what true productivity is and that's being like listening to the lord and letting him give you the energy to do what he's asking you to do and even if you don't finish everything you want to do in a day you're you were still productive because you did what god asked you to do and you were obedient and that means that you're productive but i think we idolize productivity and we're like oh i need to just produce i need to do i need to do i need to do this and the lord's like no, you, you need to live for me and ask me every day what I'm asking you to do. Be faithful where you're planted. Even if you're not planted anywhere, really, like be faithful where you're at and ask the Lord to show you his heart and don't idolize productivity and don't beat yourself up and feel guilty when you're not producing. Um, you know, there are things out there to consume for a reason. Like there's entertainment. There's, there's things that not the bad ones, you know, hear this with the Holy Spirit, but like, you can't be producing all the time and not taking some stuff in that's good. Like there's certain things out there that if people produce it, it's made to consume just it's the balance. It's not consuming like content, reading, you know, doing all these things that relax you, like even video games to a certain extent, like not the real gory ones, but there's certain games like I would play games on my phone, like little fun games to just I didn't need to produce at that time. I didn't need to be super productive because the Lord was like I just want you to exist and just rest and be so still. And that is productivity to me. But he's like, you don't need to produce right now. Just consume. That's fine. He's like, there's times where I want you to look at my people have created great movies, great videos, great content. And, and there's things that I want to teach you through through consuming and not be, making that an idol and not just being lazy and consuming too much. But he's like, it's not wrong to just kind of exist for a second and not just be putting out all the time you need to receive if you don't receive you can't give to the extent that God wants you to do especially just receiving his love receiving the love of people as the Lord brings them into your life it's so important and I've learned that just to, I've learned that the past you know few years especially this past season of my life and so um I pray this helps you I pray this gives you some perspective and that you see what I believe um, when you're in a healing process with the Lord, what true productivity is, but an unconventional productivity that you might not feel productive by the world standards or by what everyone else in your family or your, your house is doing or whatever or on social media is doing. But you feel like I can't tell you how I can stay even just within these four walls, not go anywhere. Like I used to think that I had to go places, you know, oh, I got to go to this cafe. I got to go over here. And then at least if I get out of the house, I'm productive. I'm doing something. But I can literally sit. I can lay in my bed. Like, you know, go, I walk my dog. Like I make dinners. Like I'm doing like laundry. I'm cleaning. But like I could do half my work even in my bed where they tell you don't do work in the same place you sleep or you're not going to be able to sleep. I can do work in my bed and sit there my bed's made and everything but I can sit there do so much work like my parents will come into my room I have like my iPad my laptop my my writing like I'm working away I'm writing away I'm putting up posts or I'm writing things you know that I'm working on and I'm doing all this stuff and my my bed looks like an office and my parents are like you haven't even left your room today or like really much and I was like yeah no not really but I've gotten so much done like I get literally in one place I can get so much done and feel so productive or if I'm just resting for the day and I've literally watched Gilmore Girls, played games, hung out with a friend and just kind of rested, had fun, had chill day, I can still go to bed feeling productive because I just know that's what God wanted me to do for the day. And I can literally not have this constant striving mentality, which is so beautiful. Like, I don't even think I realize quite yet how much that like just the un... Um, wiring of my mind in that area and just the renewing of my mind in that area how freeing it truly is because I used to be like oh man I didn't do enough today and like beat myself up and feel guilty I don't feel that anymore I'm just like <laughs> I I woke up today um the Lord told me to do this and I did it and I'm gonna go to bed happy and I can go to bed in the same place that I work <laughs> and be like great like and it's just I feel like a skill to be able to just be in one place and be content because it's not the place that your your contentment is in it's Jesus that that your contentment is in and and I don't know if, if he says I'm good then I'm content with that I'm like sweet like let's go you know so anyways I pray this really did help you and gave you a different perspective and if you're going through this healing process or the Lord has uttered the words to you like the Holy Spirit has said you just need to pause. You just need to sit. Let's just sit for a bit. And you're like not working. You're, you know, especially for a lot of the women out there, you're in the home more and stuff like 
the, just trust me, it, it is a hard time, but stick with it. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it's uncomfortable, but stick with it because what the Lord is doing is trying to get, get you to sit so you're not busying yourself and, and, and being like, look, God, I'm doing all these good things. Look, and you're feeling good about yourself. But he's like, I just want you to be. I want you to exist. And I want you to see that I love you as you be and as you exist and as you just follow me. And so I'm really excited for you to get to the root of the matter and to the root of the issues that, that have just been you know, you just been bumping into for years. Sometimes you need to sit to gain perspective. Because if you're standing, you know, like if you're standing, like if I, I'm going to stand for practical, you can't see me. But if I'm standing, the whole room in my room looks so different. Like I'm seeing it up here. I don't see what's down here. I don't see what's down here. But if I sit, I can see things. Like I can see there's like literally dirt on my wall here. I didn't see that when I was up here. So when you sit, I'm like, oh, I should probably clean that dirt that's on my wall there. Or, oh, there's also a little fleck of dust over here that I haven't seen. But I, but I don't see that when I'm standing. I have to sit to, like, see the nitty gritty. Like, if you're looking for, like, when my nose ring falls out or an earring falls out, right? You can't just stand and be like, hmm, where is that? You have to kneel and, like, sift through you know, not sift, that sounds like whatever, but you have to go through like the carpet or look at, I even just see right here. I would not have seen this standing, but I have a bead. Oh, okay. I have a bead. I have like a little bead. I don't know if you can see it, but I have a little bead that's on the floor. I would have not seen that if I wasn't sitting. So sometimes you need to sit to stop, to gain perspective and stop trying harder, but seeing clearly what's been the issue the whole time and the Lord helps you see it. And sometimes you have to feel it. Sometimes, and this is the thing that really... I'm not a fan of in this time, even now, like the Lord's like, it's not enough to just know it. You have to feel it. And sometimes when you busy yourself, you can't feel it. And so then you feel good because you know the issues, you know, the roots, you know, whatever, but, but you don't feel it. And so you're just like, oh, whatever. But it still remains an issue because your body needs to know it, needs to feel it so that it can just you have to feel it so God can heal it so that you can gain perspective. And that's where we get kind of stuck in our minds it doesn't make it to our hearts to actually really feel it because it's sometimes an uncomfortable feeling when it's those tougher ones, right? So anyways, sitting and refocusing does do that. It just refocuses us. So if you're in that time, be encouraged. Like it is really challenging and it's really heavy, but the Lord is doing this out of love, not out of punishment. He's not telling you to sit because you're doing something wrong. Like I, even the times where I would sit and and be more lower. I, I had the voices coming at me that like God's judging you. This is punishment. Like you've been doing the wrong thing. So he's removing you. Blah, blah, blah. You can't even teach God's people. Anymore. Like just all these negative things that were coming at me. And the Lord is like, that's not my heart. He's like, I am having you sit because I love you. Because I want you to experience more of my love for you. And because I'm just trying to protect you. Because your heart is hitting walls all the time. And he's like, I don't want that to happen anymore. So he's like, I want you to sit and it's out of my love and provision for you not out of my like um punishment for you he's like I just want you to sit because there's things you don't see and and the bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge a lack of understanding so if you don't know you can't correct it if you don't know you can't make a change if you don't know he's not gonna he's listen the holy spirit is so kind jesus is so kind that if you aren't aware of something, he is not going to punish you in a way that how you're seeing it. He might, you know, I believe that even in this time, it was a, for me, it was like, you know, when it's like a time out, but not in a way that's like out after a punishment, but it's like if a loving parent sees that a kid is like looking at something wrong or is, is sick or not feeling well, but the kid doesn't see it. And the kid's like, no, I can, I can go to school. Like I can go do this. And the parents like, you need to stay home. Like you can't go to your friend's house. You're not feeling good. And so they're saying it in this love of like, you just need to go lay down and you need to, you need to heal up before you can go play with your friends. Like it's almost this way with the Lord, how I saw it in this time in my life where he's like, I know you want to go out and do all these things. I know you've, cre you've been created to do these things. You've been created to do a lot of things very quickly and, per and like just kind of you're you're a hard worker but he's like I, I need you to 
to sit down because like your heart is a little bit sick. It keeps hitting these walls and it's causing you um, some unnecessary pain. You don't need to feel, I don't want you to feel that anymore. And so he's like, I need you to sit down. I need to do a surgery on your heart. I need, I need to just show you my heart. And so that's his perspective of like, let's just sit down. I want to protect you. I need to take care of you. I want you to come, you know, be with me. I want you to, to, um, you know, kind of just, if there's like a wounded sheep in the field, the shepherd takes care of it. He doesn't just go like, hits it with a thing and goes, go do your thing. Like a good shepherd is going to be like, there's some wounds, there's some stuff, let's, let's deal with it, let's mend it, like, you know, and so that's what the Lord does in these seasons, it's not a time of, if you know what you're doing is wrong, and you know, like, oh my goodness, I'm doing this, this is wrong, and you proceed to keep doing it after the Lord has told you it's wrong, and you have this, like, rebellious heart, like, I don't even care, you know, there's gonna be some, there could be a little bit of fatherly punishment, like, you know not to do this, like, let's just, it's still in love, but there might be some punishment then of, like, okay, No, like there's going to be, you know, definitely consequences because you're choosing these wrong things. But I just want to give you some perspective of how to view this period of your life so that you don't fall prey to the same lies that I did. Um, And feeling like you're just having all this shame because you're just being punished. You're not. You're being healed. This is out of provision. And this is out of the heart of a loving heavenly father who cares for you. And so Jesus, I worship you. I praise you. I thank you for this video. Um, Jesus, I just pray, Lord, that everyone under the sound of my voice, they would just understand your heart about productivity. That, Lord, as you ask them to sit for whoever this is for, that they would sit gracefully, that they would sit faithfully, that they would not feel guilty, but they would just feel loved. That you are so kind to provide a space of time that they can just sit and heal and wait on you to mend their hearts it takes time though sometimes sometimes you do stuff miraculously and i pray that for your people god i pray that you do miraculous healings in their hearts and in their minds and just but the process is so beautiful lord you spoke to me um that a while ago that you know the valleys are actually the beautiful places we always want the mountaintops the good things all these like extraordinary powerful events of you know your glory but sometimes just and just your presence but sometimes like these low places when you're in the mud when you're in the dirt like we really gain perspective of your heart and get to know you there's no distractions it's just us and you in the trenches so to speak and that's honestly it's painful it's heavy it's uncomfy but it's beautiful like the things i've learned about your heart in this time i still haven't fully processed them because they're just so beautiful and you're amazing and so i worship you lord i pray for every person who's going to see this video um I just pray, Lord, that it minister to their hearts and you bring the right people across this video um, as they need it. And if they don't need to see this, then they don't, God. But I just pray, Jesus, that there will be a blessing on people to rest in this time. If they need to rest, that they would rest. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. Um... Yeah, so I'll be back whenever I'm back. I gotta go eat my breakfast now and actually get started with my day. Um, But I pray that this just gives you so much perspective and gives you um, some freedom in the areas of productivity. Jesus, he's gonna show you how to be individually productive for him. But don't idolize it because you you don't need to idolize it. It's gonna stress you out. So anyways, I'll be back whenever I'm back. Thank you so much for listening. And yeah.